Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and I asked you before to vote for the next video and you voted for this one, the automatic approach and auto land on Boeing 737. You probably know that I'm Boeing 737 type rated captain and I'll take Boeing 737 NG as example to show you how to make automatic approach and landing on that aircraft type. But before we start, I just want to read out one of my subscribers' comments. So Colin Valeli, he writes, will someone make this guy an intro? We're gonna get this guy up with the big guys. Well, let's see. Yes, so I have intro on my channel now, my friends, and it was given to me for free by one of my subscribers. So the guy named Graphic Designer just sent me the email with the video samples with pictures of what he thinks should fit to my channel. And I said, wow, it's awesome. And he said, you can use it if you like. So now I have new design on my channel and very grateful for that subscriber. You are awesome guy. And also I'll put his email over here. It's not the advertisement on my channel. I'm just very grateful. He didn't ask me to put the advertisements on my video. It's very rare to see nowadays, my friends. From my side, well, I just did this break. All right, my friends, let's get back to our topic today, the automatic approach and landing. Why do we really need it? Because the majority of landings are manual landings using just pilot skills or pilots manually fly and land the aircraft. And I think it's 95% of all the landings on our world. So why do we really need the automatic approach and landing? Because I have the airline requirement just to fly the automatic approach and landing at least once per month, just to have this experience in case I need it in the real circumstances. And those circumstances are low visibility operations, the fog basically where you need to perform the category two or category three approach and landing. Well, the system itself, the auto land, it doesn't matter on the weather, but it's used to perform the approach and landing in bad weather conditions where the human reaction is not enough to land the aircraft. The aircraft may land on its own, but it doesn't matter that as a pilot, we just relax in the cockpit and let the airplane plane land, approach and land on its own, it's actually the hard job, maybe even harder than usual manual approach and landing, but it's simple in some way and I'll explain you why. Why is it simple? Because the system that is used to perform the automatic approach and landing is basic ILS system, so instrument landing system, ILS, used in many airports, in many runways, all over the world. Now, my friends, I draw you the scheme, the picture of Boeing 737 automatic approach. So here we have ILS, the glide slope. Here we have the runway itself over here. And this is the final approach fix where we enter the glide slope. So here is the ILS, for example, ILS array. The glide slope antenna usually locates near to the runway over here and localizer antenna at the opposite threshold, near to opposite threshold of the runway. And those two antennas have been used to create the localizer and glide slope rays or beams respectively. So the uh, automatic system on airplane, so here we have the airplane, use this, this beam to follow the precise approach for the runway. Let's say that in our case we have whether for category three approach, category three A actually, it's the minimum minima for Boeing 737 and G. And uh, here we are, the runway visual range should not be less than 200 uh, meters. And the uh, decision high should not be less than 50 feet equals 50 feet and 50 feet is very it's actually your flare altitude during your automatic approach and sometimes it's your manual flare altitude so it's very low to the ground as human being you cannot land you cannot guarantee safe landing uh, from this kind of height that is why we use automatic approach and landing system but anyway let's continue so here we need some kind of the points 
2,500 feet, uh, 1,500 feet, 1,000 feet, let it be 800 feet, uh, what else, 500 feet, uh, 400 feet, uh, 350 feet, hmm, 50 feet and 27 feet. And I'll explain you why do we need all these heights for automatic approach, approaches and landing. All of those are radio heights. So the radio altimeter pumps up on the upper right corner of your primary flight display at 2,500 feet. But we are not going to talk about it now. We'll talk about it later, about all these heights. We're gonna talk about what are we going to do here. So before entering final approach fix, of course, you decelerated your airplane, you already have some flaps and you need to check just before your descent even, you need to check the low visibility approach reminder that will tell you what you actually need to perform the automatic approach with a low in low visibility conditions. So you need to check the weather, you need to check no times, you need to check the crew capability of performing this style because you may not be certified as a crew member because first rating you have then you have your first uh, for example Boeing 737 rating you have category one limitation and you need to go through additional training to be able to perform the category two and three approaches so you need to make sure that your colleague your partner is certified also make sure that the airport is ready to for uh, for this approach, that is category 3 certified, category 3 certified uh, runway, category 3 certified approach, that the low visibility procedures are enforced for that airport. Make sure that everything is safe. So my friends, airplane, airport and the crew, everything should be ready for that kind of approach. Airplane should be airworthy, should have both of autopilot available and many, many other stuff available for that approach. Radio altimeters should be working fine. Hydraulic system should be working fine. You need to have generators. You need to have the auto throttle for category three approach. And airport should be certified, as I said. And the weather at airport, the weather should fit with your requirement because for uh, automatic approach and landing, we have also the wind limitation, for example, for Boeing 737, uh, it is 25 uh, knots, yes, 25 knots of uh, headwind, uh, 20 knots of crosswind, and the tailwind is around 10 to 15, depends on your airplane modifications, uh, they are different. But what about the category 2 approach with the RVR not lower than 300 meters and decision height of 100 feet? Well, actually you can land manually. You can land manually, but still you need to do the automatic approach for Boeing 737NG using two autopilots. For Boeing 737 Classic, you can perform the category 2 approach using only single autopilot. I don't know why, but it's the certification requirement because of the MUH minimum autopilot used high. MUH for Boeing 737 NG, Boeing 737 NG, the MUH is 158 for uh, 800 version. It's 800 version and 140 for 900 version, the longest. For Boeing 737 Classic, the minimum used high of autopilot is 50 feet. So you can perform with a single autopilot. Uh, you can perform the category 2 approach uh, on the Boeing 737 Classic, but for NG. Yes, you need two autopilots for to perform automatic approach, but if you have category two, you can disconnect at 80% of the minimum. For example, you have minimal decision high of 100 for category two, and you can disconnect the autopilot at 
80 feet and land manually. But I say again, for Boeing 737 and G, we use two autopilots and automatic approach for category two. For Boeing 737 Classic, we may not use the automatic approach and perform the category two approach using just single autopilot because of this kind of limitation. All right, what do we need to activate the automatic approach and landing inside the cockpit? Well, actually, you need to set the similar course. So the captain and the first officer, they both should set the same course with the runway, the course, this course for the runway. The navigation VHF receivers should be set for ILS frequency for a particular runway and two autopilots should be switched on. The autopilot may be switched on, then you press the approach button here. So approach. So then you press the approach and MCP, you can arm the second autopilot for approach. It will not be active immediately, but it will arm. And then you we'll, let's go back to our profile, right? As I said to you, then passing 2500 feet of radio altimeter, the radio altimeter becomes alive, and the cloud says radio altimeter alive, QNH, for example, is 1013. And at this point, I just want to make sure that we have two autopilots on because the latest. Uh, the farthest you may switch them both on is 800 feet. So I press the minimum, minimum uh, two autopilots height. So then you pass 800 feet of altitude, and you didn't arm uh, the two autopilots for your automatic approach and landing. You should perform the go around if you have weather for category three approach. And same if you have category two approach, but if you have category one approach and you forgot uh, to arm your uh, second autopilot, you may continue if you briefed it before with your crew and you press set the bar minimum because for category one, we set the bar minimum uh, using your altimeter setting. The category two and category three approaches, they use radio altimeter setting for uh, minimum verification. That's the main difference. But why do we need two autopilots for that kind of approach? Because they use fail passive system. It means that those autopilots monitor each other's operation during entire approach and the flight control services are respond only to autopilot with slower with lower uh, deflection. That means the autopilot, if one autopilot will command the higher deflection, both of autopilot will switch off, will just disconnect, and of course you had to go around in that case and search for your alternate airport or land here if there is category one minimum. We arm the second autopilot, then we press the approach button on MCP, but actually it connects, it starts to actively control our airplane and monitor the other autopilot at 1500 feet. So second autopilot connected at 1500 feet. Also the localizer and glide slope scale start to flash amber and here we also have the flare arm flare arm uh, light on fma i have just drawn lots of stuff here so hopefully you will understand so passing 1000 feet is your go no go decision you need to check whether you're stabilized or not. I mean, correct flight pass, proper landing configuration, proper speed, uh, no deviations right or left. It means you're stable. If you are not stable, just go around. And if you continue approach, if you are stable, if you continue approach, the 800 is your next altitude, the latest point actually where you still can select the second autopilot to perform the automatic approach and automatic landing. For 500 feet, it's your next point where you need to check whether the flare is armed and the altimeter setting. Usually pilot monitoring clouds 500 flare arm and puts uh, his or her hand on the thrust lever. So we need two, ha two, two hands to be on the thrust levers uh, just for go round case. And yes, pilot monitoring class 500 arm and pilot flying response 
passing altitude and also flare arm. Okay, my friends, I think this picture should be more understandable. So we'll start from 500, 500 flare arm and then passing 400 feet of altitude, the stabilizer trim starts to trim, trim back to create a pitch up moment. Uh, for actually flare maneuver, then you will reach 50 feet. Uh, the flare maneuver starts. So autopilot trim up the stabilizer and put a little bit down moment with the elevator and it keeps it like this and then at 50 feet the autopilot releases uh, the elevator down moment and but we have pitch up stabilizer moment that is why we have this flare that is how airplane lands actually with the help of stabilizer trim moment and passing 400 feet you check just this trim wheels goes and passing 350 if you haven't had if you haven't have the flare arm both of your autopilots would just disconnect and you have to perform the you have to perform the go around maneuver uh, if you have category two or category three approach passing 100 feet is your minimum for category two approach and 50 feet is minimum for the lowest minimum for category three a approach and here it's a very critical point actually. During this final approach phase, one pilot is looking outside because the visibility is very low during the category three approaches. And first officer, well, the guy, the pilot who is looking outside is a captain and pilot uh, who is flying inside the instruments is first officer. It's always like that for automatic approach and landing. And pilot, the captain who is looking outside is taking the decision. To land or to go around. At 50 feet, uh, pilot, the captain should establish the visual contact with the runway lights over here, uh, with the central line or something. So at 50 feet, you're already. Uh, it's an improper actual picture. At 50 feet, you are somewhere here, all over this threshold. Yeah, it's better to redraw maybe. I'm so sorry my friends, new picture over here, it's more precise. So at 50 feet it's your decision high actually, but at this altitude, at this high, you need to perform the first action to go around. If there's no runway contact, if a uh, captain who is looking outside, we need actually to see three consecutive lights, whether it's central line, runway lights or so-called carpet, if there is none of that, you need to perform the go around, and the first action should be done over here. So 50 toga, it's your minimum, but it's also the point of your first action to go around. And if you have the contact, the runway contact, you, the captain calls, uh, okay, continue. Usually it's continue, in some airlines it's landing, or run inside landing, or continue. And first officer at this point, he's flying inside the instrument. He, he or she flies inside the instrument, monitors all the parameters and monitors FMA. And if there is no flare activation at 50 feet, first officer also presses toga for go around. And they go around. Even though the captain would see all the slides, they still have to perform the go around. So go around at 50 feet for two reasons. No contact with the runway or any kind of lights on the runway and go around because of no flare. That's what we have on the simulator and that's what we're trained for. If you have the visual contact with the runway lights, if you have the flare mode active, so it moves from arm phase to active phase, you can continue the approach for landing. The flight director bars the cross on your primary flight display will just go away at 50 feet just not to disturb your attention. So at 50 feet you need to continue to concentrate on the uh, landing or to go around, to concentrate on your go around procedure. So those bars just won't give you any anything, that's why they disappear. At 27 feet we have the retard, there is no any automatic retard tabs sound from the airplane like on Airbus, the auto throttle system will just retard, slowly retard the thrust levers to idle. And you just land. If at 27 feet you won't uh, see the retard active on the auto throttle of a main display, 
it means that it's not active but in this case you may not go around you just need to return thrust levers manually the boeing 737 doesn't have rollout capability so after you attach down the runway with your main landing gear just disengage the autopilot maintain runway central line check the speed brake up check auto brake in use open the reverser and slow down the airplane and that comes to the hardest part of category 3 operation you need to find your parking place now it could be challenging to do that with 200 meters of visibility but personally i have never had any issues with that just taxi slowly take precautions and check out taxi chart and you'll be all right Oh, my friends, I think this video is already very long, so I need to split it in two. So this will be some kind of theoretical part and in other part and second part we'll fly with you the simulator or maybe I'll show you the real airplane, the real automatic approach and landing. We'll see, we'll decide later on. But thank you very much for watching this video. If you are awesome guy, you need to follow awesome guy checklist as usual. So first, like this video, then subscribe to my channel, then ring the bell, whatever it means. Thank you very much for watching and have a great time.